Welcome to the Magic Hour here at Sobu in the French Quarter, whose motto is where life is meant to be lived, not endured. Today we have a really special guest on the show, and her name is Caroline Thomas. I, I wanted to really be about the people of New Orleans that are doing yeah. all this incredible work behind the scenes that no one really knows about or understands. Yeah. And you shared a few things with me in that short moment of time where uh -huh. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I have yeah. to know more about Because well, so this. many people think that like floats are done by elves. Like they don't understand that there's, it's actually done by human beings. The amount of questions I get on like, oh, I thought the crews made all their own floats, or I thought that was all volunteers, or something like that, or I thought that was a part-time job, and it's right. like, that's why float workers don't get paid well, because people don't even understand that it's a j real job, right. <laughs> you know? That you're, you're just a, like a cultural torchbearer, you know? And there's something, like, and I feel honored to do that. So which crews do you paint for? Like, give me right. a little bit of sure. that. Um, well, I work for this company, Royal Artist, um, and it's a smaller company. I think we have something like eight parade contracts now, um, three in New Orleans, and then several, the rest in Mobile. Interesting. And I like Proteus because one of the older, the, the second oldest parade in the city, been around since the 1880s, and they really, they don't have any concerns about like it can be weird and esoteric they like it when it's kind of mystical because you know yes. those old line crews have that kind of like kind of most like mason kind of secret society quality yes. to them. they like it when it sort of um goes into some strange realms so it doesn't matter that like the audience doesn't really know right wagner's ring cycle but the fact that it has like dragons and dwarves and yes. all these mystical things that are all they care about mardi gras to me Three years living here yeah has like defined like ultimate well-being and it's lost and i think it used to be much more common in you know the western world to have those moments and and this is me being a nerd and the fact that i like read books on like the history of carnival and stuff like that but i think that really the rise of the industrial revolution and people got real nervous about big mobs of drunk people out on the streets and there was this kind of effort to bring all the holidays inside. You know, that, oh, you should be spending Christmas mm. with your family inside. Where Christmas used to be Mardi Gras. I mean, it used to be just debaucherous. And this kind of effort to kind of like rein everybody in. But then you lose, I think, what is just a part of human nature to want to be out on the streets and having these like moments of just like kind of controlled chaos. And I take all the brushes that I um, destroyed through the year of making floats and spray paint them gold and kind of decorate them and I make like a little like note that just says like, you know, this brush gave its life to paint a Monica float. Yes. So anytime somebody compliments the floats, you know, cause you'll see people see us rolling by and like, you did a great job this year or yes. whatever, you know, I'll like give them one of my brushes oh my God, and that's it. always like a great connection. And oh. in the certain, certain people are kind of like, oh, I don't get, you know, they're too drunk to understand, but certain people it's just like, total fanboying out like yes. I just like you know they just got Brad Pitt's oh, autograph or something so so love that. that's a nice like way to like connect and actually see who, who cares because you do get in these moments where you're like oh everyone's <laughs> just there to catch beads and nobody cares yes. and when you have these moments where somebody's yes. like no yes. we see what you're doing we're seeing like the work you're producing yes and we're excited about yes. it like those moments are probably the best if you were in a room with 200 tour guides yeah. right now yeah. Like what? What would advice would Caroline give them on yeah. connection? You really want it to be a good fit. It's not just about selling the school because you don't want somebody going to a school that isn't a good match for them. They're not going right. to thrive there. What has New Orleans given you and taught you that's yeah. kind of inspired what you do? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a city that changes you. Like you have to go through a process of a couple of years of like assimilating into what is really its own little nation. You know, it's, it's, um, it's not like the rest of the US, it's not quite the Caribbean, but it's somewhere in its own little realm. Um, I think slowing down and actually seeing the value in that and being like, okay, it might, it's New Orleans time that definitely exists and things just, you can't expect to get anything done on the timeline you're expecting. Like, as this whole series has kicked off, I'm like, I wanted to give something to people oh, that nice. have yeah. made an impact and have been positive. And as we've kicked off the magic hour, 
Aww. I have picked up a pair of glass beads for everybody yeah. that stays on, and so yeah. I want to make sure. Thank you. Year 2017 <laughs> is as magical as mine, and yes. this has been absolutely incredible. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, no, and this I is cannot great. wait to stay in contact and see more of your incredible art yeah. as the Mardi Gras continue on. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>